What is going on? Go away. There we go. All right. All right. So let's start over. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about in repo add ons. Uh, my name is Jake Bixby, uh, senior engineer at classmates.com. Uh, Yes, I enjoy tacos. Uh, uh, while I contribute to Amber CLI and uh, riding the roller coaster at Disneyland, I think that's the Matterhorn. Um, what's that? What about classmates? Uh, they're they're still a thing. <laughs> uh, you may recognize me from the uh, Ember. Uh, uh, so. so is it Starbucks or something else? Oh, it's totally Starbucks. Because uh, okay. I, 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 I don't have time to stop at the other places. There's a Starbucks in the lobby of my building. So, um, so uh, uh, in repo add ons. Um, how many people know what in repo add ons are or have heard of them? Or Wow. I was hoping for more. OK, so uh, I got a lot to, to go through. Um, so in repo add ons. Um, Put simply, they're add-ons that live in your Ember CLI project. Um, they are, as far as uh, Ember CLI is concerned, there is really no difference other than where they live. Uh, so uh, basically, you can generate them uh, inside of an Ember project. Uh, so Ember Generate or Ember G. Uh, I like to use shorthands wherever I can. Um, so Ember G in repo add-on, and then the name of the add-on. And that basically installs it into your lib folder in your Ember CLI project uh, under the, the my add-on namespace. What, what that will install is actually a uh, package.json and an index.js. And that's the only two files that it actually puts in that folder. Um, so uh, what happens then is a little magic where it updates your package.json file in your project and just links to that it basically tells NPM where to find those uh, Ember CLI add-ons. Um, it tells what where to find them? It, it tells uh, your Ember CLI project where to find them. Uh, so when you generate it, you'll see, I, I, I should have put a slide to this, but it, you'll see like a little uh, at the bottom Ember add-ons and then uh, links and then the, the path in your lib folder. Uh, so. Uh, so how are they different? Um, they basically, they just live inside your lib folder of your, your project. Uh, you don't have to do any NPM publishing, uh, and they're extremely lightweight. Uh, they're just, just two, two files, um, and then whatever files that you add on. So um, I'm going to focus specifically on this talk on uh, a few of my favorite uses. Uh, the add-on hooks are extremely powerful. Um, code organization, so they can be really nice for code organization. And then add-on prototyping. If you don't want to go through the whole uh, rigmarole of creating a add-on, if you want to just try out a project uh, or an add-on for, say you run into something in your project, and you're like, I could maybe create an add-on for this. This is generally what you'd want to use an in-repo add-on for, just to try it out and you know see how it goes. So um, before diving in, uh, why would I use an in-repo add-on uh, instead of regular add-on? Uh, so if you have something that's very specific to your project that you don't think is going to get reused, or you can't reuse it, say that you've got a very private thing that you need to have done uh, that would be perfect for an add-on, but you can't actually you know, publish that out into the world, uh, an in-repo add-on would be a great use for that. Uh, so managing vendor libraries. Uh, if you've got... Uh, specific libraries that you need to pull in, like uh, Google Analytics or anything like that, uh, you can use some of the add-on hooks uh, to do that. Um, so the uh, included uh, and uh, the tree for vendor and stuff like that, you can basically use to uh, bring some of that stuff in. Um, are, you, are you saying that those hooks run individually to each add-on and as so, a consequence you can add hooks that are specific to that add-on? Correct. To get those general purposes? Correct. So for every single add-on, if you put a hook in your index.js of that add-on, it will process that hook individually for that add-on. Uh, so you can basically do 5,000 of them, and each one would get processed individually. It build real slow. So basically but. use a sophisticated tool for your specific Correct. Uh, yeah, you can basically take advantage of all of those add-on hooks, which I highly, highly re recommend looking at. 
uh, you may it may spark an idea for something you've been running into in your project that you know could be solved that way. Um, so uh, the code organization um, is something I've kind of been playing with, um, just basically trying to organize your your uh, UI. Like, say you've got global UI that that just you use all over the place, like specific navigation. You can basically make an in repo add-on called navigation and drop all of your uh, components inside there, and then basically it's all in that, so you know, all right, navigation, I'm going to go to this, and then you don't have to dig through it, or it doesn't get created in somewhere in your, um, in your somewhere in a route somewhere. Um, so environmental dependencies, uh, these are um, a lifesaver for us. Uh, we've got specific things that get injected into our app in the, the live Tomcat environment, that uh, basically I, I, you know, was unable to run mm -hmm. tests uh, because we didn't have these uh, um, dependencies available. So uh, using Content4, uh, I was able to basically just drop a bunch of files in uh, 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 in repo add-on, and then basically inject that into my index.html file that gets generated when it runs the tests, and so it makes that available. For, for my uh, test. Um, and then, yeah, quick add-on prototyping is just, it's awesome. So, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about each of the add-on hooks and use cases for them. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, I do have a repo that um, I'm, uh, I have in the slides. I only have like three <laughs> examples in it. Uh, I, I kind of find the house, I've run out of time. So. Uh, so uh, broccoli tree modification. Um, so post-process tree uh, is uh, super powerful. It, it lets you do things like uh, filter out. Uh, you can like exclude files uh, using the funnel, uh, broccoli funnel. Um, and then same with tree four and, and the, the other uh, tree four hooks. Um, so pre-build and post-build, uh, you can use this to do such things as copying, moving, uh, symlinking files. Uh, you can run grunt tasks. You can run gulp tasks. Whatever you want to, you know. You can you can uh, with exec sync you, I, run make stuff. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, so basically, uh, through this, you can do quite a bit that um, you know you'd have to do. Um, uh, sort of, you have to build your own stuff out to do that. Um, server middleware. Uh, so, uh, in development, say that you need to add uh, some specific headers, or there's uh, specific things that you need to have that you need to basically mock out for your, um, or, or rather that your uh, server needs to um, basically give your app so it can, when it hits your live or, or your API, for instance. Uh, it needs to have these things available. Um, so you can do uh, quite a bit with uh, the server middleware hook. Um, and uh, just to mention, should only be used for development. Uh, you do not use EmberServe for serving your production uh, app. So. Uh, content for hook, uh, this is the one I was talking about earlier. Um, basically, in if you look inside the index.html uh, uh, file uh, of your Ember CLI project, you'll see uh, a bunch of these little uh, content for head, head footer, uh, for body. Uh, basically, what you do is in the content for hook, you you basically just say um, uh, if the type of content matches this. Uh, so it'll run this content for hook for each of these hooks that's in your index.html file, and if it matches the name that's there, so if it matches head, uh, it will. Uh, you can basically use that to inject uh, the 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 code that, or, or you know, string content that you want to put in there. Um, so uh, the included hook. Uh, so this is how a lot of uh, uh, basically uh, library wrappers uh, add-ons, they basically use this to um, bring uh, libraries in to your app, but you can use this to do things conditionally. So uh, I don't know if anybody's ever run into an issue with uh, uh, testing with Phantom JS uh, with your Ember CLI app. Uh, if if you have bind in your app somewhere, uh, it will freak out and break really hard. 
So you basically have to, because uh, PhantomJS doesn't have bind, so you basically have to put in the uh, ES5 shim uh, so it'll work. So, uh, so asset exclusion, uh, this is something I kind of talked about a little bit before, but uh, post-process tree, um, you just basically say uh, filter out, base, you, you give it a glob of files to match uh, for the funnel, uh, uh, broccoli funnel, and it will basically match anything that hits that and ex strip it out. Uh, there's there's funnel is actually really powerful. Um, you can put stuff in, you can take stuff out. It's uh, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so uh, and additionally, you can do um, custom commands for your Ember CLI project. So say that you have something that is a task that you run frequently uh, in your team, uh, and you just want to make a, a com little command that just runs. So so what this basically does is it gives you the opportunity to say ember whatever and that is your command name and it will execute what is it whatever is inside of this included commands hook so you could put node stuff you could put um, blueprint stuff I and mean, there's there's a whole sky's the limit so um, so a little bit about code organization um, so this is sort of an example of what I was talking about with the UI name spacing uh, so you can say uh, here I've got uh, a navigation in repo add-on uh, with uh, a breadcrumb nav component, uh, but I'm exporting it in my app folder. Uh, so up top is the add-on folder. That's the business logic of it. And then uh, in the app folder, I'm just doing a just straight export. Uh, it's just a wrapper, essentially, of uh, that uh, breadcrumb component which then uh, lets me use it in my app as navigation slash breadcrumb nav. So it just lets me namespace my, my stuff. Just a nice little organizational thing. Um, if you've ever had to override Ember, uh, Martin actually had to do this recently. Um, so basically, you can create a in-repo add-on to uh, do your um, reopen of your Ember code. And then all you have to do on that last line here, uh, you just import that. Uh, you may need to put an uh, exception in for JS lint or JS hint. Uh, it may complain about it. But basically, this just brings that into, uh, and, it, and it basically brings it in before your app is initialized so your, your uh, uh, override happens. And then. Uh, in repo engines, uh, it's it's so I don't know if anybody's heard of engines, uh, but the the basic concept is engines will be uh, a way to essentially package routes of your app as separate entities that get brought into your core application and lazily load them when you hit the routes. Uh, it's kind of a nice little holy grail that a lot of people really want. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, I talked to Stefan Penner about a little bit of uh, add-ons basically, or engines essentially being very similar to add-ons in that you know, they'd have a same project structure. So that's kind of, I think, where things are heading. Um, I don't know specifically, and I, uh, this is kind of a little bit of speculation. Things may change, so. Uh, but, uh, you know, you'd be, be able to sort of have a, a engine that's basically the same thing as an add-on uh, in your project and it would you know pull it in. Uh, so add-on prototyping. Um, so if you've got an idea uh, and you just want to try it in your in your project, um, you know you can refine inside your uh, your app. you can experiment, iterate you, you're, it's risk free. you just toss it if you don't want it you know. Uh, there's, there's really, it frees you up because you don't have to go and create another add-on repo and do a whole bunch. It's, it's just, you know, nice little scratch paper to, to try out your idea. Um, and also, you can leverage your existing app for testing so you don't have to do a full dummy app. Um, it's, it's really, it's specifically for those cases where you've got something that you're kind of stuck on or you're trying to fix in your app or you think something might work very well for your, your project. Um, that's that's where I recommend it. 
Uh, and then you don't have to do NPM linking. It's, it's already set up. So you don't have to do like a, um, when you're developing a uh, add-on, you can use the dummy app, or if you're trying to use it with your specific application uh, or your, your project, you have to do a, a NPM link so it can find the project. Um, so, uh, you know, and also if you're kind of shy about your code, I, I've been very uh, shy about my code pretty frequently. Um, you know, you can just code it and you don't have to share it with anybody. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, and, you know, if you find that it's useful, uh, you can basically extract it. All you have to do is take that code, create a new add-on, and drop it in. And there's your add-on. And then you can uh, basically send that out and show it to the world. Uh, so, uh, again, this is, I uh, just kind of wanted to touch on this again, uh, how you create uh, an add-on or in repo add-on, sorry. Um, but this is how you generate files inside of them. So uh, you can actually uh, use the generators inside. Uh, it, this, is, this is something that kind of bugged me, so I made a pull request for it. Um, uh, basically, you can uh, blueprints inside of an ad, in repo add-on by uh, just passing the uh, dash IR. Uh, so it's actually, the full thing is dash dash in dash repo dash add on, uh, but you can use the shorthand, uh, which will basically say uh, install this component inside this add on. So that basically results in, in, into um, your in repo add on. So. And yeah, that's just a fresh component that's empty. So, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, I've got this uh, repo, and you can uh, look at. I've got three examples in there. I promise I'll put more in. Uh, I just kind of I ran out of time. So, um, so questions? Uh, Alex, were you? Oh yeah. Uh, oh okay. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have uh, two repos that? That's a good question. Um, I something of like if you try to do A B testing or something, you have like a repo that you pulled in from the next node, mm -hmm. and you want to kind of override it, so you copy it into your link folder and make some modifications. So that definitely fits fine. Just say take the new code or something. You know, um, I don't know if those would collide. I would imagine it would probably maybe blow up just because. It, you're basically saying NPM is basically receiving two instructions on where to find the same thing, essentially. Well, so it's basically, I, I don't know. Okay. It's something to try out. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably helpful. Yeah, I, I don't. I would ask it on Anything else? Anybody? Just out of curiosity, when did you in your They've been in for um, a while, actually. I think since like uh, 0.40 or three, like since since like I think August last year. So they've, they've been around for a while, um, but yeah, they're just they're awesome. Try them out. So, all right. Thanks for your work on that too, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're gonna I, yeah, go yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, we're gonna take a break, but I wanted to introduce. Maybe I'll introduce Pedro when he gets back. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is that okay to introduce you? Yeah, that's okay. Like, so uh, let's take a five-minute break. Break fast. Bathrooms are out down the hall. <laughs> <laughs>